and put a slight bend in the cables where the white line is. Peel off any protective coating and feed those flex cables through the frame. Make sure the speaker grill lines up at the top and most importantly make sure the home key is sitting nice and square and operates correctly. Check the S Pen and the display flex are not trapped. Push the home and touch key flex down. If you have a replacement power switch, you'll need to put a bend in the flex this way. Then offer it into the casing. This can be a little bit tricky as you need to lift the power button up while you push the switch down into the casing. When you've done that, make sure the rest of the flex is located and give the vibrating motor a good push to make sure it's stuck down to the casing. Now replace the headphone and earpiece. Remember to use the smaller screw. Now take the main board and gently bring that up, making sure that none of the flex cables are trapped. Now reconnect the S Pen Flex and the headphone and earpiece flex cable. And the display flex. Reconnect the home and touch key flex cable. If you're reusing the original USB board, make sure it's nice and flat. And place that down into the frame. Pushing the hall sensor back into place. If you experience a poor 3G or GSM signal, make sure these sprung pins are high enough to make contact with the antenna on the speaker housing. Reconnect the USB flex cable. Now replace the forward facing camera and proximity and gesture sensor. Make sure the glass is clean on the inside. Before you plug it in, take the metal clip and place this end in first. Then push it down until it clicks into place. Now reconnect the flex cable. Now take the 3G GSM antenna flex. 
you have this green tape, then lift it up and place the cable into the casing. Line this plug up as much as you can. This can be a bit tricky. Keep moving the plug around until you feel it locate and snap into place. Push the cable down into that groove, otherwise it will be trapped by the rear casing. And again, keep moving the plug around until you feel it snap into place. Have a final check to make sure everything's in place and connected before you replace the rear cover. Place all those silver screws. Only do these screws up finger tight or they might snap or strip. Replace your SIM and micro SD card and the battery and the rear cover. And you now have a fully assembled Galaxy Note 3. The digitizer is not going to work because the Plex cable was damaged. But I did find that the S Pen still works fine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give me the thumbs up. And I'll do my best to make some more. Now before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Sockytech Online also for the latest updates. Alright, let's dive in. Hey there, Sock here from Socky Tech and in today's video, I'm going to share over 250 plus tips, tricks, features hidden features, advanced features, and basically a full and complete tutorial of your Samsung Galaxy S10 
or the S10 Plus, as well as the S10e. So the Samsung Galaxy S10 is one of the most powerful smartphones in the world with deep and rich features. And I wanna make sure that you gain complete mastery over this fantastic device. So I am going to start this video off with some light and quick tips to customize your smartphone and then dive deeper into advanced and hidden features that will blow you away. We'll talk about security, customization, the edge panels, the edge lighting, a complete tutorial of Bixby and all its components, secure folder that allows you to hide photos, videos, and files, the Samsung DeX functionality, and so much more. And of course, I wanna make sure that I time code all the major topics so you get a nice and clean breakdown if you want to jump around within the video. All right, so let's dive in and discover. All right, so let's get started right away. The very first thing I want you guys to do is go to the settings and then scroll all the way down, go into your about phone section and then click on edit right here and simply rename your Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Now in my case, I'm gonna rename it to Saki. And what this is gonna allow me to do is when I connect my phone to other Bluetooth devices, it's gonna be more easily recognizable. And also you now have a custom name on your smartphone. So there we go, that's Saki 10 Plus. Fantastic, let's move on. The next thing I wanna have you guys do is, as you can see on the top, you do have a battery icon, but you're not seeing the percentage meter that shows you exactly how much battery is left. So what you wanna do is you wanna bring this down, go into the uh, uh, option over here, tap that uh, three dot button here, and then go to status bar and quickly enable the show battery percentage meter. And now it says 61%, that's much better than the normal icon. Now, one more thing is uh, when you swipe down on the screen, it takes you to the app drawer. When you swipe up, it also takes you to the app drawer. And also when you tap on this button, it also takes you to the app drawer. So there's a lot of redundancy going on here. Let's fix that really quickly. The very first thing I wanna have you do is pinch on the screen, uh, go into the home screen settings, and then enable the quick open notification panel. Just click on that. And now when we go out, when I pull down on the screen, it actually brings down the actual notifications panel. Okay, so when you when I when you, when I swipe up, it'll go into the app drawer. But when I swipe down, it brings the notifications panel. And when I swipe it one more time, it is going to expand that and give me access to the quick toggles. And the other thing I want to have you do is I'm going to have you guys disable this button in case it is enabled. So what I can do is pinch on the screen, tap on home screen settings, and on the top over here it says apps button. So what I can do is I can disable this and when I go out, now that button is gone and what I can do is now I have one extra uh, room for an extra app uh, to get dumped right over there. So I can grab one of these guys over here and put it right over here and that's just more convenient than having redundant buttons all over the place. Now swipe up, go to the app drawer, swipe down, notifications panel and then here we have an extra space for a new app. Now, one thing I'm gonna show you guys is, uh, I'm gonna show you this in a second, but I do have a little panel here on my edge screen that allows me to lock the screen. I'm gonna show you how to get this done, but let me lock the screen really quickly. Uh, what I wanna show you guys is when the screen is turned off, you can tap it once to show the always on display that I'm gonna be talking about in a second, or you can tap it twice and that's gonna take you to the lock screen. Now, in the lock screen, what you can have is you can have face widgets. So let me double tap here, and as you can see, I have the music controller here. If I was actually playing music, uh, I have the calendar uh, widget over here. I can also have the alarms and I can also have the weather over here. And again, these are things you do have to enable. So let's go inside. I'm gonna show you where they are. Let's go to the settings. Let's go to the lock screen. And then from here, go to face widgets, tap on it and make sure that the ones that you do want are enabled. So they're gonna show up on the top of your lock screen. Now, let me go to the uh, always on display, which is right here. Make sure that this is enabled. Uh, basically, if I go in here, it is fully customizable. Uh, this one is enabled. Let me just X that out. And then the display mode should be set to tap to show. Do not do show always. That is going to eat your battery life a lot. You can also do show as scheduled, maybe at nighttime, but tap to show is the best option 